Today, our guest is Scott Everson. Scott is a Olympic, Olympic, am I saying that right? Oh, uh, dude, you're going to bore people to death if you tell them, <laughs> if Olympic, you tell them I'm Olympic training coach. Olympic Good specialist, Lord. brain retraining coach, certified personal trainer, and life coach. Scott, welcome to the Primal Foundation podcast. Hey, man, what's up? Dude, I, I love talking to you at Hack Your Health. That's where I met you. And the um, first time I, I'd ever been there. And uh, man, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about what I've learned in the last year or so. Oh, uh, that's, this is exactly why I love having these conversations and, uh, you know, every, everybody like hacker health was great. It was cool. I it was my first time. You're saying it was your mm -hmm. first time, uh, you know, meeting people that you see on Instagram or you're interviewed on podcasts and the community piece, I, the, the, the breakout sessions were great. I'll say that first, but the community piece was, that's what it was for me. How about you? You know what, man? So, so here's where it ties in with my health, just talking about this part. And I'm going to keep it interesting for you guys. Okay. Don't turn me off yet. Just, just <laughs> stay with me here. Okay. Um, listen, I've gone through every health condition you could imagine. Like I've had the worst, not the worst. I mean, it sounds like I'm bragging about how bad my health was, right? It's a terrible thing. I ha have what I call it is every symptom from every disease. When you have severe mast cell activation syndrome, um, withdrawing from medications, I was withdrawing from a benzodiazepine. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about the story of Jordan Peterson. A lot of people in the carnivore space follow Jordan Peterson. I mean, Jordan Peterson had to had to go to Russia and get weaned off this medication under under uh, uh, an anesthetic. Like he he had to be put into a self induced coma to get off this crap. And then they even then they had to wheel him around in a wheelchair for two years because he couldn't walk. And that's been me for seven years. It was it was the worst hell imaginable. Um, I used to be a, a big guy like you, if you could believe that. You know, I had a, a gym in Toronto. And I was about 190 pounds at my lowest about three months ago. I got down to 110 pounds. So I mm -hmm. lost 80 pounds. Every symptom from every disease, every mental symptom, every physical symptom, the worst pain, the worst brain function, everything you could possibly imagine. Yeah, there's a lot of things that helped me over, the, over that time. I'm about to tie this in with what we're talking about. Don't worry. Carnivore. Carnivore has been huge. Okay. That's what got me started on recovering my health to some degree. But you know what, dude? I've seen dozens of practitioners. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to fix my health, literally going bankrupt in the process, having to uh, like, you know, take out loans, put a second mortgage, everything to try to reclaim my health. And you know what I wish somebody had just said to me all this time, Tony? What's that? Honestly, I and I would have paid tens of thousands of dollars if somebody, instead of writing out all these protocols, do this, do this, take these supplements, you know, get outside and blah, blah, blah. All I needed was one sentence. Hey, asshole, hang out with your fucking friends. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's all. That's all somebody had to say to me. Hey, asshole, go meet, make some friends, go hang out with some com community members. That's it. That has been the most healing thing for me by far. Way beyond carnivore diet, whatever. Because when you get, when you get, you, you've been sick for as long as I was. And basically your only conversations are with your kids in those years with the two-year-old and five-year-old, which isn't much of a conversation. Um, you become extremely socially isolated. And, you know, Funny enough, when I would go hang out with people, like I'd meet up with community members, go to these meetups, all of a sudden I would start feeling good. Wow, I feel so much better. And I go back home, I feel like shit again, right? So um, really that was behind my idea when I first started doing like creating my own meetups, creating my own retreats, stuff like that. I was basically just wanting you know, people to hang out with in the community. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it turned into this whole other thing. So this is where I came on this binge now where I'm like, okay, anything that's carnivore related, I'm pretty much going to try my best to make it out to. 
So every meetup that's out there, uh, carnivore cruises, you know, conventions, you know, starting my own stuff, retreats, whatever it is, I try my best to make out everything now. And I could tell you that that has been the most healing thing for me of anything. I know I'm going on a huge rant, but I just had to throw that out there. It's important. It's a, it's an important piece to talk about because we all, it doesn't matter what profession you're, you're in. Sometimes we end up working in silos and we're just isolated and doing our own thing. And, you know, nobody really knows what's going on with us, you know, unless you tell them and, but you're seeing people, you're having conversations, people checking in on you. It's important. Um, you, you know, I'm a trainer out here in Chicago too. I've been, that's like this summer has been a big thing for a big uh, group of coaches. We've been doing meetups, not M E E T the other one, the other kind of meetups and uh, meetups and training together and coaching together, no clients. It's only us uh, talking about our workshops that we're doing, or we're talking about some new things that we're learning and developing. And we're just kind of doing this on our own. And we try to meet up once a month. It's been a game changer. I feel more vitalized. And that's another piece of hack your health. I almost quit podcasting, to be honest. I was like, I'm done, dude. I'm done with this. Like, I don't know. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. You know, I'm running yeah. around trying to make these, uh, you know, uh, podcasts and fit them in the day on top of a regular job. But when I left hack your health, I just was revitalized of like, oh my God, this is why I do what I do. And I, I walked away with this new sense of like passion. So that community piece is huge. Uh, and yeah. And going into that, you know, you, you kind of did this little, you know, you had this laundry list of some of the issues that were going on. Like what, what started developing? What was like these issues that start to develop where you started to get kind of like a little bit worried. And then now you're going to a bunch of different doctors. Well, I've had health struggles since about 2005. I was put on long, long course of antibiotics. Um, and then it was really just stress, man. I mean, stress is the most overlooked root cause of disease out there. Just chronic stress year over year, whatever, working at some stupid job that you hate. And, you know, I mean, like all the typical bullshit that people have to deal with on a daily basis with finances and, and you know, relationship troubles and this and that. And uh, it's just not a very sexy thing, right? So now, now everyone's talking about mold and this and that and blah, 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 heavy metals and, you know, all these conditions. But, you know, I think st stress, when it boils down to 95% of the time, that's the root cause of most people getting sick. If you really ask people, hey, what happened to you before you got sick? Well, I this happened and, you know, someone died or... You know, I, I got divorced or I was, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, um, so that's basically what happened to me. You know, I had some good stressors, uh, some bad stressors, but it was stressed nonetheless and severe stress for years, you know? And, um, and then when I moved to Toronto, uh, you know, I, within a span of a year, um, you know, I had some close family members die. I was getting married, I moved cities, I changed jobs, uh, you know, I was like, just so much change, some of it good, some of it terrible, you know, but I was just under so much stress. And then my stomach gut health started to go. And then everything got compounded on that because I trusted doctors, I trusted the medical system. So, you know, I got put on psychiatric drugs, uh, benzodiazepine, which is the worst poison imaginable. Um, if you don't know what a benzodiazepine is, it's a, it's an anti-anxiety medication. And uh, it, it goes under the name, <clears throat> usually typically Xanax or Razapam, Clonopin. Um, those are sort of the brand names for it. Um, and when I, when I got off that medication, um, I've never been the same since. Like, just all shit hit the fan. It was just... Um, you started something, what they call mast cell activation syndrome, uh, which I think is really just a, a condition that's derived from leaky gut. You know, it's intestinal per permeability, uh, nervous system dysregulation. And when you have leaky gut, I mean, it basically could sort of have this domino effect into every disease, every symptom that you could possibly imagine. You know, there's nothing that's off the table. And literally living with dozens and dozens of symptoms, um, feeling like somebody's holding a gun to your head 24 seven for years on end, 
uh, severe insomnia. I think the, the most I've ever gone without sleep was about 12 days where I don't think I had like one minute of sleep, wow. um, shaking in bed, you know, just, just the worst symptoms possible, you know, um, brain and just horrific brain inflammation, like feeling like you're living in a, in a nightmare. Like you don't know the difference between your nightmares and, and living during the daytime. Like I, I couldn't. I couldn't differentiate the two. It was like, I don't know if I'm awake or not. It was just, you know, just, it was, it, you know, I don't want to get too crazy into it, but I mean, it's, it's like Jordan Peterson said, you know, when you're going through that, there are things worse than death. <laughs> and, and there were many years where I was just wishing to die. And, um, I think my kids sort of stopped that, but I'll tell you though, man, uh, going through all that, has been the biggest blessing in the world. Um, and this is the key component. And, you know, I've been on different podcasts and I, I don't know. I, I think some people, they just, they're not resonating. They think I'm talking like I'm a total crazy person. Maybe I am, I don't know. But I'm so, so grateful for severe chronic illness. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me, bar none. And I think a lot of people who have been through it would say the same thing. And they have, they have told me this. I've talked to people that have had like stage four cancer and they're like, thank God I had stage four cancer. Like, thank God I had that. Like, and it's just wild to me to hear people say something like that, you know? So, uh, when you have gratitude for your struggles, I mean, that's when growth really begins. And that's when I've seen a lot of growth in my life. So. Yeah. You don't, you can't, you can't have appreciation for a beautiful sunny day if you don't even know what, you know, what a tornado or whatever. There's destruction. Mm -hmm. There's all these things. You got to have that yin and yang sometimes. And uh, when you get thrown into situations like that and you do come out on the other end, you're just like, wow, there is that new appreciation for life. And you keep yeah. going. And for you, you're helping other people now. You're helping them with coaching. And, you know, with that um, you know, wired for healing, how are you getting people like when people come to you with the main things that they're looking for? Cause the biggest thing is like, you're talking about brain retraining as a piece of this. How does that come into play when people have some, you know, issues going on? Well, uh, it, it's a huge factor. This is where you, people usually turn me off, Tony. I'll, I'll be honest with you. You say brain retraining. It sounds very woo woo. But typically, if it's your brain, um, stress that gets you into a uh, state of, of of chronic health uh, deterioration or chronic conditions, whatever you might be dealing with, it could also get you out of it. You know, um, if your nervous system is upregulated, there's a lot of different processes that go on in your body, um, a lot of inflammatory processes upregulation of stress, uh, stress hormones, uh, norepinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol, you name it. Um, inflammatory cytokines that, that get activated. And, uh, that's generally what causes the disease state. I mean, if you really think about, you know, poor gut health, okay, well, you know, stress will lead to inflammation. Inflammation will lead to degradation of your, your gut lining. Uh, it'll lead to uh, um, a less vagal tone, which has been studied. So your vagus nerve gets affected, which uh, basically is, is um, the longest nerve in your body. It affects digestion, your your heart rate, everything. Um, so if that stops working as properly, your your motility slows down, your stomach acid production slows down, um, your your um, your bile in in your intestines start to degrade. Uh, so you're not able to assimilate nutrients as well. You start getting um, uh, gaps in the tight junctions of your gut lining. So that's really the 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 path to the disease state um, and what they call leaky gut. And I really think leaky gut is the foundation of of most disease, to be honest. Um, and uh, 
And then, you know, basically what we do is we do nervous system regulation work, um, try to get stop the stress, which is really basically just stopping the inflammation. And when you do that, your body's able to recover. Your, your vagus nerve is able to start working again. Your stomach acid starts to increase. Uh, your villus atrophy um, starts to, uh, to, to grow back. Um, and, uh, and your hormones start to become regulated. Um, so there's just, you know, it's, it's sort of the way back to health. I think the problem is, is that everyone's looking from the gut up. Everyone talks about when you fix your gut, you fix everything else. We're kind of of the approach of, well, it kind of starts here first. And, you know, you can't separate the gut from the brain and you have to work both in conjunction. You can't separate the two. So we do a lot of things. I mean, we work on circadian health. We work on diet uh, and nutrition. Our head coach, Courtney Voss, is a uh, nutritionist and she's a GAPS practitioner. And she's a lot of uh, different, um, um, you know, types of uh, certifications in different health segments. But she also is brilliant with circadian health. She's brilliant when it comes to brain retraining. Um, and really, that's what we do. But the most important component to Wired Free Healing is community, 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 community. And that's why I started these retreats. That's why I started Meat Stock. Um, because I basically just wanted uh, to for people to hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 very interesting, too, because, I mean, you, you just said it as well of you know, when people go into uh, an elimination diet, one of those one things that they talk about is, you know, brain fog is gone because, you know, oh, I've healed my gut. Therefore, my mind is I, I'm more clear headed. I have no brain fog anymore. I feel really, really good. Uh, but you're doing it, you know, kind of in tandem or the opposite of retraining the brain to affect the body. Uh -huh. uh, for you, you know, when... And this is my other question too. Did you wean yourself off of these medications? How did you start to kind of take back your health? Well, my health isn't completely taken back by any stretch. I, I would say that I'm far better than I was. Uh, however, I'd say on most days, the way I feel normally would probably send most people to the emergency room. Um, uh, that being said, <laughs> I uh, did not wean off of the benzodiazepine. Um, I, and then I got back onto it and weaned off of it very quickly. Um, so I didn't do that properly. Um, I'm still on this poison, which is duloxetine and I'm trying to wean off of this. It's probably, I wean off of one bead a month or once mm. every four or five weeks, I take one bead out. I still have 96 beads to go. So there is that. And that's probably why I haven't healed completely. Um, but, uh, it's a process, man. You know, it's been a big process. I mean, it started with carnivore and that helped, uh, with a lot of my symptoms. Cause you're not getting all that toxicity from vegetables and anti-nutrients and, um, you know, it's your, your gut begins to heal a little bit. Um, you know, you're not eating high histamine foods. So you're not having crazy reactions anymore. Um, and your nervous system begins to regulate. But when I started doing the brain retraining stuff, and I started to work on my brain and my stress. Um, that's when things really started to heal for me. And of course, there's other things too, you know, just a lot of these lifestyle interventions, getting some exercise, you know, um, work out my circadian health, grounding, uh, fasting. Fasting has been huge because that's really good at, um, at, you know, healing inflammation and community and and really that's it those are sort of my pillars for healing how's the physical like the physical activity now as you're you know because you're saying you were sick before is it slowly starting to come back uh, well it's not great um it's i i bought a weight bench and i bought some weights which is a lot that that's huge because i you know, working out was my happy place. Like I said, I've lost 80 pounds and it's not, wasn't, I wasn't fat, you know, I was built and I was, uh, you know, that was my happy place working on the gym every day. Um, but I bought some weights and, and it hasn't gone over very well. It really stresses out my nervous system. So 
I'm trying to work my way up to that right now. I'm kind of doing a little bit of, um, cardio training. I'm doing a little bit of boxing, um, just kind of sparring that type of stuff. And, uh, I try to get the rollerblades out. That wasn't so easy for me, but I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm starting to gain some weight again. Um, I started eating a shit ton of butter. <laughs> so, um, I just, I'm just plowing down that goat butter and, uh, in about span of about two and a half uh, months, I put on almost 20 pounds. That's um, a, that's amazing. Yeah. Since that's hack awesome. your health, since hack your health, I've put on about 15 pounds since then. Um, so I'm starting to gain some weight again. So I'm hoping that, you know, once I keep putting on more weight, maybe I'll be in a position where I could maybe start trying to work out a little bit more, but that's still a ways away before I could do that. Yeah. It's amazing with this, with this diet, you know, uh, and I'm not a hundred percent, but you're fairly carnivore. If I'm correct, you're a little bit more animal based I'm, as well. No, I've pretty much gone strict carnivore again. Going strict carnivore. Yeah. The only thing is because I, I do get severe acid reflux. Sometimes I do have, um, these, uh, like no calorie mints. <laughs> it's like throat lozenges just to help. I have a few of those every day, but aside from that, I'm strict carnivore and it's mostly, um, lion diet with organs is, is both basically what my diet is. So lion diet, mm -hmm. organs and, uh, and butter. Nice. And yeah, there's, there's two aspects of it. a lot of people get into carnivore for, uh, aesthetic reasons, losing body fat, how, what have you. But then there's this other camp of healing autoimmune issues, trying to put on weight. So this, there's like a whole spectrum of carnivore mm -hmm. and it's, it's mm -hmm. crazy that, you know, it's, it's right in front of us, but yet we get referred to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, to this thing, that person, the other, when most of it is just our nutrition. Oh, dude, it's, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> you know, I mean, the stuff that our doctors should be telling us, but aren't, I mean, the amount of people that we could save, and, and this is partially why I do this, right? This is partially why I do this for job. I mean, you know, people can't be saved unless they want to be saved. Right. Or if they could get themselves out of that sort of matrix like bubble that they've been living in. I think for me, it took getting so sick before I was willing to sort of remove myself from that matrix and thinking outside the box a little bit. And uh, when I first heard about carnivore, I was on a beach in Hawaii. If you, if you could imagine that I was on a beach in Hawaii and I came across Jordan Peterson's book which somebody was reading a fellow Canadian on the beach. And, um, and then when I started getting into George Pearson, that's when I started learning about the carnivore diet. I said, what the hell, you know, that sounds stupid. It's probably going to make me worse, but <laughs> it can't get much worse from here. So I just did it, you know, and, um, I've had some setbacks from other things, but, uh, the carnivore diet has been a miracle worker in a lot of ways for sure. And, the, I'd say the best thing about the carnivore diet has been that it has lifted me out of the matrix and it's really opened my mind to a lot of other things in terms of just my thinking on politics and, and the medical system and, you know, just the way we live, you know, more ancestral type living. So, yeah, I have a lot to thank for that. There's... I, I, I get so fr like I get frustrated. And when we talk about this kind of stuff, it's like, oh, it's like conspiracy theory. Like, no, like it doesn't benefit the system as it is right now. If yeah. to make us healthy, it oh, benefits dude. us to keep us, keep us sick and keep us returning customers. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always, I keep talking about my dad, my dad and my stepfather both had, uh, bypasses and, um, you know, they put them back on the same crappy diet that got them there yeah. and they've both, you know, after the, um, initial surgery, you know, you do the cardiac rehab and all that stuff. They're watching what they're eating a little bit more. They lost weight within a few months. They've gained it all back. If not more on a laundry list of pills every single day, that's their life now. Uh, and Crazy. it's like, what, like, what are we doing? And they, they, they had a traumatic experience open heart surgery and yet they're still doing the same stuff because they feel like oh i could just go back and they'll fix it up again and then i'll be all good it's like well i can't i can't stand it <laughs> dude i am probably the most hated guy in america right now and i used to keep my mouth shut 
But I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, I'm just going to speak this from the rooftops. I don't give a shit. People hate me, whatever. A lot of, I would say 99.9999% of the time, everyone thinks I'm a crazy person and they don't listen to me. You don't know how many people I've come across. Cancer is something that I'm very, I'm very, you know, motivated to help people with, you know, cancer is a big one because I've just talked to so many people on my channel that have sent their cancer into remission through metabolic therapy. I had this one guy, unfortunately he did pass away, but he had several years of, ex of extension on his life from doing a high fat carnivore diet and, uh, and doing the metabolic therapy approach of like glutamine inhibition, stuff like that. And, um, and it's just, it's been huge. It's been huge, you know, and like the amount of people I've tried talking to that have cancer, like just in my normal life and they don't listen to me ever. I don't think I've ever had one person listen to me where it's like, I show them studies. I, I, I point them to podcasts. I point, point them to all of these people I've had on my channel, like uh Guy Tenenbaum, uh, who had stage four prostate cancer, stage four prostate cancer, went to his bones for crying out loud, was in his liver. Okay. He cured it through doing a 40 day water fast. And uh, he did a 40 day water fast. And then he, after that, he was ketogenic, completely cured his stage four cancer. No chemo, no radiation, no toxic treatments at all. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And there's been many stories like that. It was, uh, there was another guy I talked to, I can't remember his name right now. He had a glioblastoma. Glioblastoma actually responds better to keto than any other cancer, as far as I know, because mm -hmm. that, that specific type of cancer feeds pretty much solely on glucose mm -hmm. and people on with glioblastomas are curing their glioblastoma left and right using metabolic therapy. And to me, the saddest thing in the world is seeing a, a little kid, you know, they're pumping full of chemo and, and radiation, stuff like that, just destroying their immune system with these toxic therapies. You know how many people die of, of, uh, what, what's the, what's the, the wording, how they use this. It's, it's so corrupt. Um, they say died from complications of cancer. Well, complications of cancer, that's from these toxic therapies that they're using. That's from chemo. That's from radiation. That's from these, um, oh, what, what are they called? Um, hormone therapies or whatever the hell they are. Uh, and they kill people. They kill people. They destroy your immune system. People die on, on these toxic therapies more than more. Than, I'd say more often than, than not, they're dying from these toxic therapies than from the cancer itself, or it's really accel accelerating their, their rate of death. Um, and uh, I'm not saying metabolic therapy always works, but it seems to me most of the time and, and pretty much every person I've spoken to, it's at least prolong their lives to a pretty good extent. Yeah. So Vinny, uh, Vinny Tortoridge, you know, he had a stint of cancer. I think he was like, they gave him like four years or something. And I think it's like 17 plus years later, it's come back. Um, I talked to him very recently and, you know, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I'm going back through chemo again, but you know, his diet's in check. He's eating right. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. like, I did a, you know, I didn't do a hard workout, but I worked out this morning, you know, like he was still yeah. doing his thing. And he was said, he goes, I feel good. You know, I'm going through this and cause the cancer came back, but, uh, it's just wild, you know, people with SIRS, um, I don't know if you ever um, heard of, of Trevor Griffith's story. I don't know if you ever heard of his. No. Yeah. So they were doctor to doctor passing him around. Couldn't figure anything out. He was like blacking out like while he was driving, he was like forgetting his wife's name. Like it was a whole thing. And he was just like, he goes, I don't even know what I'm going to do anymore. The doctors could not figure it out. Um, yeah. You know, but they ended up pegging sirs, tried carnivore, got onto carnivore and just, flipped his health. Now he runs a gym in uh, Ohio and he's just, you know, he's put muscle back on his yeah. mental clarity is there. It's like a Michaela Peterson too, you know, yeah. switching. Yeah. You're a young kid. You can barely walk. You have, I think she had arthritis in like their hip or maybe even a hip replacement uh -huh. and, you know, eat strip loins every day and is great.
right? Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's dude, it's all about what, how much money's in it. Yeah. How much money's in it? No doctor's ever going to prescribe this, except for some of the great doctors that we know, Dr. Kiltz, Dr. Shafee, Dr. Baker, you know, whoever else. But no mainstream doctor will ever promote this. In fact, not only will they not promote this, they will tell you you're going to die. You're going to get heart disease. You're going to get cancer, which all my doctors have told me. I went yeah. to go see a gastroenterologist. I mean, imagine my ex-wife, and I'm, I'm going to emphasize the word ex in there, is a heart doctor. She's a pediatric cardiologist. <laughs> and she used to tell me all the time, she's not supportive of this diet at all. She used to tell me all the time, I was going to, I'm going to get myself heart disease because I'm on this stupid diet, you know? And uh, lo and behold, I mean, 90 something percent of my diet for the last three and a half years has been fatty red meat. And my CAC score is zero. You know, my cholesterol's through the roof. My CAC score is zero. All every test I've had, my CRP has gone way down. My CRP used to be hovering around uh, around two, I think it was. This was a few years ago. And now it's a 0. 0.3. Well, that's a pretty good inflammatory marker for checking, especially for your heart health. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that strange? Hmm. Why would why would red meat cause my inflammation to go down? Right? All my inflammatory markers are down. Right. So it's dude, it's it's the biggest that here's the thing. And this is why us carnivores and sometimes don't get me wrong. We could sometimes go a little bit overboard in the conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Right. You're in, people are injecting monkey blood into you. You know, when you go to the doctors, whatever. I don't know. There's all sorts of crazy conspiracies out there. But this is why we start thinking outside the box. This is why we start to have a better understanding of, of the world. Because we think about this, we think about, huh, this is interesting. Okay, all I had to do is eat ribeyes and my autoimmune condition went away. My cancer went away. My anxiety and depression I had for 40 years went away. I was able to lose all this weight. My heart health got better. Everything got better, which is the complete opposite of everything I've learned since birth from my parents, from my teachers, from my doctors, from my friends, from the media, everything. Everyone's telling me this shit's going to kill me. Yep. Huh. What else are they lying to me about? I, I, as a, as a health, I used to teach health in high school and I, I showed the kids, uh, forks. I, I admit it. I showed them forks over knives. I showed them food ink. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, looking, oh yeah, I look back on conspiracy, all that fucking yeah, all Netflix that's... propaganda. Yeah, I geez. mean, we were we were watching different things. That was the big push. Even the mm. nutrition books that I had for the high schoolers, you know, saturated fats are bad. You can't have them, and this, that, or the other. And it's just like, and it, it's like you don't know what to trust anymore. And when you were talking about like. You know, all these people are going to say are not going to support you. It's like, well, I can't even remember the the study. I think it was a Harvard study where if you eat more than two uh, servings of meat in a week, you can increase um, your chance of getting type two diabetes from meat. I, 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 I don't think I'm mistaken there. It's like some type of a serving amount. And well, you, yeah. Well, you know, what, Tony you should replace it with Fruit Loops. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit Loops yeah. over, uh, uh, yeah, Fruit Loops, oatmeal, and whatever over um, steak, steak dude, and dude, red meats at the bottom. Dude, listen, I don't know what I could talk about on your channel, but talk about I'm really, dog. It, there's so much bullshit out there, man. Come on. Yeah. Like, I, I hate to talk about politics, but I'm already the most hated guy in America for, you know, basically every time I go to a store, anyone, any, anytime anyone tells me about condition, I tell them about this. This is why I'm saying the most hated ma man in America first off food is like a religion to people you start yeah. talking to people because i have a fitness business in toronto still now i'm not a trainer anymore but i do talk to a lot of people about nutrition stuff like that it's like a religion if you tell people they can't eat their oatmeal anymore people are going to drop you like a hot potato yeah so um you know but i listen talk getting to everything you know all these tentacles about the truth i mean first off corporations have their pricks in your back pocket at every corner, you know, and we see that with the food scheme, the food pyramid scheme and all that stuff.
eat your 10 servings of heart healthy grains, whatever it might be. You know, now we're seeing it in politics and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm assuming most carnivores are probably at least centrist, maybe right wing. I don't know. I'm, I I used to consider myself to be a liberal, but I think I've been pushed further to the right because the left has gone so insanely left that it makes every other person look like a crazy right winger. Um, <laughs> and uh, we see all this stuff, you know, I mean, look, look at some of this stuff. I'll, I'll list off a few things, right? Let's list off like the, the assassination uh, attempt with Trump a couple of weeks ago, right? You know, I, there's so much crazy shit there. To me, that was like the Epstein or um, Jeffrey Epstein, you know, murder or whatever or it's suicide whatever you want to call it you know the cameras just happened to be off the guards fell asleep or whatever is like come on you know fuck off you know like it's such bullshit oh this the roof was too sloped slopey roof we you want to send our people up there you know it's like you know again fuck off this is all bullshit you know and and uh and then and then you have they they had the debate earlier than a lot earlier than usual you know, they've been trying to push. They they had this plan to push Biden out for a year now. We everybody saw it coming. And uh, to say, oh, well, they're panicking. They threw Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, this, the, literally the day that Biden quit was the day that Kamala Harris was starting to do these rallies. And she already had her ads out. I mean, this was a, a big plan for months and months and months and months. Right. And now the media, you saw the media was on board with trashing Biden. All of a sudden, Kamala Harris is the, the darling of the media, as if she's just been so great for the country for the last three years. The economy is doing well. We're, we, we don't see anything. Inflation's got, come down. We don't see anything at the grocery stores anymore. The prices are low, right? Gas prices are low. We go to buy a house. Oh, no worries. We're all doing great right now. This is according to what the media tell us, right? And Kamala Harris has played such a great role in keeping our economy and our border, the border is just a right wing conspiracy. You know, there's there isn't millions of people pouring in. All these people I see being dropped off in buses in Tampa. It's all just in my met. It's all just in my head, you know. So I'm seeing all this stuff, and my brain is like a lot more awake than it used to be. And uh, I'm seeing that this literally is the matrix that we're living in. It's it's the matrix. People are living in this bubble where their whole world is created for them it's it's not created by them it's a whole world created for them of complete and utter bullshit and i was watching this documentary uh what the bleep do we know and i always thought it was a bit of a stupid documentary i don't know if, if you guys have seen this but no uh they they're talking about there's some case there's some you know historical historical um uh, what was it? Uh, um, I don't. I don't even know what you call them. The brain. My, my brain fog could be pretty bad. And this is why I rant like this. <laughs> but uh, explorers. There were people who were exploring, and we're talking of hundreds of years ago. And apparently, um, natives. They they said natives couldn't see the ship because they had never seen a ship before. And they just kind of ignored it or or they didn't even see it because they their brains can't process what a ship was or if there's any danger, whatever it was. So um, the explorers came and they they enslaved them and took it over, blah, blah, blah. I don't know the whole story, but you get the get the idea. And when you present these ideas to people, it's like it doesn't compute. Nothing computes. It's like they don't understand what you're saying. Like they, they can't even fathom that cancer be, can be cured through a diet. They can't fathom that eating steaks could cure an autoimmune disease, right? So even though 99.99999% of people aren't receptive to it and they'll never listen to you and this is getting nowhere, that very small minority of people, that one in a thousand that you talk to is going to listen to you. And if you're like literally saving one person's life, that makes it all worth it to me. And that's why I'm going to keep talking to people. I don't care if people think I'm crazy. If people think I'm crazy, they're probably not people I'm meant to be friends with anyway. I don't give a shit. If you're living in the matrix, I'm sorry. Like, I love you. You could be a great person. 
but we're probably not meant to be friends. This is why I'd rather hang out with people in the carnivore community because we understand each other. We get each other. You know, we have different sets of values. We have different sets of ideas where our minds have been opened through whatever challenge. Some people it took getting really sick. For me, that's what happened. For some people, it just took losing weight. Maybe they they want to lose some weight. Some people, they're just like, I just want to opt up, optimize my health. I've never had any health problems. Those are the smartest bunch because it didn't take a swift kick in the ass to get them here, right? Yeah. So I admire those people where they're just, I just wanted to try it out. It's like, what? You just wanted to try out the carnivore diet? Are you fucking nuts? <laughs> but to your to your point, though, because you're sharing these stories and you're talking to people, there is this grassroots movement and these stories are connecting with with a lot of different people through social media, through podcasts, through whatever. And you're right. Like if you're connecting with one person, one person listens to you and they do that. But because we're doing what we're doing, I always forget. I was like, why do I have that pocket? Why do I, am I even doing any of this stuff? And it's like, you get that one DM or that one message of somebody, Hey, I'm starting to exercise more because I saw this, or I'm starting to the carnivore yeah. diet because I heard you guys talking about this. I have a friend that, is now doing he's more animal based or whatever and i probably said this in the last podcast i just recorded but it's important he had like severe eczema and all of his life since he was a kid and he just kept hearing about carnivore carnivore this you know autoimmune issues so he switched to a lot of like fat red meat you know and like a little bit of fruit and he's like it's gone i don't yeah. I don't have anything. He goes like, I'm yeah. so pissed off because all my <laughs> life I've been putting on steroid creams and all this and jacking myself up. All I had to do is change my diet. I shit. I would have did that when I was a kid. Um, yeah. But because he heard it through people like us and it, that's, this is, this is the work that we need to well, do. And we have to, we have to put the information out, but that's it, dude. So that, that, that's the thing, right? It's like, our message is, is reverberating out there because we have people now like hire, you know, people who are like celebrities getting onto this. I saw a picture of, uh, oh fuck. What's that actor's name? Um, that really badass bald actor, Jason uh, Statham, Jason C yeah. With Anthony Shafee. Like apparently he called Anthony oh, Shafee to go I hang out his, at his house because he's like, I want to learn about the carnivore diet. We have Joe Rogan, like talking about carnivore diet a lot. Like, getting all these carnivores on his channel. I mean, it's the biggest podcast in the world. We have yeah. one, the biggest modern day philosopher, Jordan Peterson, talking about carnivore all the time, right? Like it's getting out there in the mainstream. And I think yeah. the more we keep pushing, the more we keep pushing, it's the more, you know, when you have millions of people talking about it, eventually it's going to get out there, right? But we're still in the infancy of this. Yeah. And this is a great segue. Meat stock. Meat stock. You're gonna have uh you're gonna have a bunch of you know, to us, they're celebrities, they're rock stars. Uh talk about I the last one wasn't too far along. If you could talk about last year and then kind of what you're looking to do this year. Well, actually, so uh the last one, it wasn't even last year, it was two months ago. Two, was well, the last one, yeah. May uh it ended May 4th. So yeah, it was like two and a half months ago. Um that was it was great it dude it was for me i wasn't sure if i wanted to do it again i kind of did that in a very dumb way i basically had three months to to do that whole thing and uh it was just chaos chaos like people didn't see that thankfully for the most part but dude it was like the the biggest chaos for me over that three months and um and it was great like sean baker came and kelly hogan and and um, a bunch of others, you know, I I don't know. I came to think right now, but there's a, a lot of great people, Dr. Kiltz and Sally Norn and, and other people as well. And um, I just loved it so much. I'm like, I want to keep doing this, but I want to grow it into, I want it to be like just a thing where we, we just have like as many people there as humanly possible. You know, I just want to have a shit ton of people there. So I was like, okay, we need to have more celebrities like now we have Ken Berry coming, Nisha's coming. Um, oh, okay. Nisha Tysos? I need to. No, she's not coming. Actually, I invited her, but she kind of she she couldn't make it. Mary Ruddock is coming. She's one of my favorites. She's she's actually one of my coaches. Um, 
we have Dr. Boz and Sean's coming again and Kelly's coming again. Oh, steak and butter gang. Um, yeah, whole, whole bunch of people, Dr. Vadia. I know he was on nice. your channel. Um, so a lot of, a lot of really cool guests are coming to this thing and, uh, it's basically retreat. So you actually get to live with these people. And it's not just like your regular hack your health. Like I like your hack your health. Hack your health. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not bashing anything. I think all of these are great and they're all different and, you know, have pros and cons to each one, but it's a very different experience from like hack your health. We are kind of like going in that massive warehouse, uh, listen to speeches and stuff like that. This is like, you live with them, right? So you're like living with Sean Baker, you're eating beside him for five days. You know, you're all sitting around a table eating food together and, you know, waking up and watching the sunrise and working out with each other. And, you know, it's a, it's a much different experience, you know, and it's a much more of like a family type of experience, like where you walk away from this feeling like you have like a hundred new family members, you know. But this year we're doing a little bit different because we're going to have a convention on top of that. So last year we did do a lot of speeches and stuff like that in the cabin. It was kind of a smaller type thing, but this year we're doing it where it's going to still be, have that intimate cabin retreat feel where you have like a hundred people there. And it's, and then we're also doing that weekend convention. So over two days where everyone's going to be doing their speeches up on a stage at a separate venue. Um, so now you have the option of coming to, um, coming to the cavern retreat and convention or just coming to the convention you could just get a weekend convention pass same as you would for hack your health at a fraction of the cost so um so yeah it's it's a really cool experience man and um i have to say you know there's the old saying like you know you should never meet your heroes sometimes that's true i've met a lot of my heroes and sometimes they're the biggest assholes you've ever met like <laughs> right um but Pretty much everybody in the space, you know, 99% of them have been the most incredible, fucking loving, most caring people, even people who, you you know, you might suspect, you know, like people who like, it, it almost seems to me like the bigger name you are, like the nicer you are in a way, like people out there like Ken Berry, like coolest people in the world, like just down, completely down to earth, nicest people asking you know they ask you like anything i could do to help let me know i'll do whatever it takes you know what i mean like they just want to get the message out there they have good intentions you know like it's 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 been absolutely amazing it's been so heartwarming yeah i always talk about it like anybody that has like a podcast will be chatting or whatever you know like our friend casey ruff and i'm just like oh dude, he's awesome dude casey's the man he's the reason i got, I got into this because he was my carnivore coach back in the day, uh, helping me like with, uh, training for an Ironman on carnivore. Cause I just didn't want to do it the other way. I started carnivore. I'm like, I'm not going back. This How is did that go for you? Fantastic. Great. Yeah. I, I don't, again, the pro we we're talking about propaganda earlier or whatever, you know, I've done marathons prior to that. And I was the, I mean, I'm talking pasta dinners the night before, <laughs> carbo loading, you know, I'm, I'm going to about to crap my pants in the corral, ready to go for the, <laughs> you know, like, and then I got <laughs> goose on me. I got shot blocks. It's, it's just so crazy. And then once I went, I went to keto out of then COVID hit and I was like, yeah, like keto's cool, but it's a little complicated. I'm like, is this a, a, a net carb? Is it not a net carb? Whatever. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go carnivore. And I just, after COVID I gained weight. And so I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to go carnivore. And I started doing that, started working out, you know, and I was like, you know what? There's nothing freaking to do in Chicago. Everything's shut down. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'll just start training. I really want to do an Ironman. I want to get off the bucket list. I was really inspired by some of my friends that did it. So I did it and I was like, I felt phenomenal. I think I did yeah. under 50 carbs because I had a fat bomb and a U can, I think, and I'm ballparking that. And there's coaches that wouldn't work with me. They would, they're like, if you're doing this, what the hell is carnivore? You're going to die. People just kept yeah. telling me you're going to die out there. You can't do it. No carbs. And I was, I looked into do more research. Zach bitter. I don't know if you are familiar with Zach bitter. He's a more of a ketogenic athlete, uh, but he has the 100. Is he the one who started. You can S fuel. I think oh, he's just S, 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 S fuel. You can Sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
kind of the same principles you can in S fuel, but he, I think he still has the indoor 100 mile record, but it's doing more of this fat adapted, uh, way of life. Mm -hmm. And I felt great. I didn't, I wasn't like hungry. I wasn't bonking. I would do, you know, my training was great. My recovery was awesome. Uh, after leaving that, um, and having conversations with Casey after the fact, like post race stuff, I was like, this is, this is the way to go. This is a way to live. Like if you could complete that kind of stuff with no carbs, like, you could do anything. You don't need them, you yeah. know? And well, if you want to use it, cheap energy, energy versus, you know, good energy. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to add things in your diet and whatever, and you want to do animal based or what have you, like I'll have fruit time to time, but it's very sparingly, uh, 90%, 90 to 95% is just yeah. red meat, salt, water, coffee. Dude, and that's dude, pretty much it. You, you know something like i'll throw something out there because i was talking about conspiracies earlier mm -hmm. um you, you mentioned covid you know a lot of people are talking about how you know their health was severely affected by the vaccines and myself included like i did not have a good reaction to the vaccines at all and i'm, I'm hope, hoping i'm not getting your channel in trouble here but um but everyone's talking about that you know you know what else you know i think is really overlooked is people's effect from just being isolated dude and talking about community i think i don't know if it's so much yes. the vaccines that was hurting people's health because everyone blames the vaccines or shedding or whatever it might have been i think it was more the social isolation which had way more of a health impact than any of that stuff you know uh 100 that was one of the lowest parts of my life was when we were just shut down yeah, i was because right? i'm i'm a teacher PE teacher. I'm teaching my PE classes via Zoom. No interaction with the kids. The kids aren't interacting with each other. It's like, it's crazy. I actually had to go yeah. to Austin, Texas because our school shut down again in, uh, for like a second wave of COVID. I'm like, shit. So I rented a tiny house. So happily, it's pretty funny that Casey stayed in it <laughs> uh, the, at Hack Your Health this past one. I was like, he's like, I'm in a tiny house. I'm like, did it look like this? He goes, yeah, I go. Yeah, I stayed there for two weeks, like two years ago or three years oh, ago. Awesome. But uh, yeah, I was doing there just because I needed to get out and do things with people. And Austin was open. Um, and Chicago is just like it's cold, it's dark, sunsets at like five. I had to get away, but it was a big thing. And I, at, some people liked it. You know, they love working from home. I get that. But I'm a teacher. I interact day to day with kids, faculty, staff all day every day on my feet you sit me on a couch or a desk to do my job when i've gone x amount of years every day moving and grooving and talking to people that was rough that was i, I don't really talk about it a lot but that was one of like the lowest points of my life yeah. and i gained a ton of weight mm -hmm. I, I just wasn't eating right i was drinking you know at the house ordering pizzas and a combination of everything and i just i i felt like if i didn't change right after that because some people from covid you had went two ways you either like started really taking care of your health or you just kept on doing what you were doing while you're isolated yeah. and you went one of the two ways yeah yeah no i i saw that affect people's health more than anything you know the social isol isolation i think that's one thing that's really been the worst thing for my health you know like i'm i live in florida right now i don't have too many friends here like to be honest with you you know and, uh, you know, sometimes this, this is what I'm talking about, you know, I'm not paying people to hang out with me. No, no, no. We got to get but, you out there. We got, you got to get some meat up. No, I know, of, man. What part of Florida I, are you No, in? I, you know, I, and I got the two most beautiful kids. I got a lot to be grateful for, man. I'll, I'll tell you, like, just getting back, I, I like to always come around to this, like, dude, gratitude for struggle, man. Challenges. That's what you got in, you know. It's like, I almost say like, you know, it's what people should be striving for in their lives, right? Is to to go through struggles, to go through challenges. I'm not talking about getting deathly ill like I was, but people, you know, I think that's a, the biggest problem is people are always looking to stay in the comfort zone. They want to be comfortable, right? They want to, they want to sit down they want to watch Netflix. They don't want to do uncomfortable things, you know? And um, I'd say that has been the biggest gift for me in terms of, doing these hard things like you like not only being sick but sick but like doing these things that are hard to get myself out of that like doing the brain retraining stuff every day going on the carnivore diet i know some people are like oh man life got so much easier when i went carnivore like 
I guess it is to some degree, but for me anyway, and I know for a lot of people, getting on the carnivore diet to begin with was was not easy. That was not easy at all. Like I'm cooking food for the kids. Like I have addictions that I that were so cemented in me for 40 something years. Right. So just to go carnivore like that just overnight was just not, you know, I was at Trader Joe's shoveling in fucking peanut butter at 10 o'clock at night. Like that's yeah. that that was me, you know. So addictions are real. Um, but you know, to do these hard things like fast, you know, even when I was 110 pounds, I was doing like 48 hour fasts. You know, like I couldn't even move my muscles. Like I had no energy in my body. Like my muscles wouldn't work. But I was fasting because I knew that was going to help my gut get the inflammation reduced. You know, and so I'd be able to eat more and then I'd put on more weight. So having to do these really hard things has has made me in in some ways I feel like at least compared to who I was like superhuman, and I'm not yeah. nearly at the level the, of the person I want to become but I'm getting there. You know what I mean? Whereas before, had I not gotten sick, had I not learned about carnivore and all this stuff, I'd still be in subway every day. I'd still be drinking, you know, every weekend with my friends, I would still not be doing anything to get myself out of the comfort zone. I'd be wor probably working at some stupid job that I hate. Like I did for, for decades, you know? So my whole life has changed, man. This is why I'm saying that I'm so grateful for, uh, for, for all the challenges I've had, because I've met the the most amazing people, I've learned the most incredible things, you know, I've become such a stronger person, built strength of character. I have so much more appreciation for life when I'm having a good day, even when I'm having a bad day, my bad days now are nothing compared to what my bad days used to be. So I'm like looking around now, I'm like, look at the sky. I'm like, holy shit, the sky is so beautiful. The trees are so beautiful. The grass, you know what I mean? Like everything is just amazing, you know? And like, you love everything, you love everybody, you know, and uh, I'm still working on my anger issues. I definitely still have some anger issues. I'll throw that in there. I ain't perfect, <laughs> but I'm working on it, you know? Yeah, so. uh, dude, you're, you're a badass, man. Like I, the, the mental fortitude to be where you were and to where you are now. And it's still, you're still, you're saying like, you still got work to do. The race ain't over. You still got to keep trucking, you know, yeah. but a lot of yeah. people when they're backs against the wall that they feel like they're stuck. That's that's you know? who, when it that's when it shows who what you're made of. When yeah. your back's up against the wall, what do you do? Do you go cower in the corner or do you say, no, fuck you? I, I for me, anger was a big driver for me. I'd be like, no, fuck you. You either get busy li living or you get busy dying. I'm going to get busy living. Mm -hmm. I'm a successor. I would tell myself that over and over and over and over again. I'm a success story. I'm a success story. I'm a, I would tell myself that a hundred times a day because before I'd be lying in bed, jealous of people who were success stories. I hated them in a way. I say, fuck them. You know, I, I can't be, why can't I be like that? You know, over time, I'm like, no, I am a success story. You know what I mean? And I would just tell myself this shit every day, lying in bed, feeling like shit, whatever. And uh, eventually it's like, you know, the person who, says they're ugly every day they look at themselves in the mirror and they say i'm ugly every day well sure as shit you're going to believe that soon enough yeah. right like so you gotta you gotta fake it till you make it sometimes i know it's <laughs> not the most you know earth shattering thing i'm telling you here you knew all this but i think people just need to get hit over the head with it sometimes you know yeah, that your, your perception your brain mm -hmm. fixes your body your perception of yourself if you perceive yourself that way that's how you're going to be uh, what is it? The old, the Michael Phelps thing. Every time he goes underneath the doorway, have you ever heard that? He'll like say something to himself. Every time you go underneath a door, through a door, doesn't matter where it's at, a door jam. And he would be like, I'm the best. I'm the best. Really? Um, yeah. He yeah, yeah. would say those things and just literally just keep continuously. And it was just like clockwork. Every time he went through a door yeah. jam, opened a door, he's telling himself like yeah. something um, to give him that edge, just to have that confidence. But I mean, you're, you're doing awesome work, you know, um, wired for healing, meat stock, all that stuff. Uh, I'm super excited for all of this. Uh, where can people find you if they want to get connected with you? Yeah. Go to meatstock2025.com. Uh, we still have about, I don't know, 30% of the retreat tickets left. So we're running out. Um, so if you guys are interested in attending that, you could buy a ticket for that. 
Uh, if you want, we have lots of convention passes, weekend convention passes left, so you could sign up for that. Uh, Wired for Healing, we're actually revamping the program right now, so we're not open for business, but you could go to wiredforhealing.com. Uh, Courtney Boss, man, dude, if you should have anyone on your channel, get Courtney on your channel, man. I feel like I've never met and or heard of Courtney. Yeah. I gotta check it out. Oh, dude, like I, I'm not saying that to, you don't even have to talk mention a word about Wired for Healing. Just just talk to Courtney Boss. She's she's your girl. Awesome. But uh, dude, I really appreciate you, man. I had a I had a blast hanging out with you at uh, Hack Your Health, and uh, I'm really hoping we could get together more often. Yeah, I mean, likewise, and I appreciate you taking the time and uh, coming on here and, and chatting. And we'll, we'll we'll definitely have to meet up. I'm looking. I, I gotta swing some stuff. I gotta see if I'm gonna be available. It's uh at the end of May. It's because it's at the end of May, right? It's uh no, it's well, it's May fifteenth, May nineteenth, gotcha. or the seventeenth and eighteenth for the convention. But I'm going to all sorts of stuff. I'm going to um, I'm going to uh the beef roundup thing. Um. Okay. Bella's wedding is coming up in, in August. And then uh, September, we have a Charlotte meetup, which is a big Charlotte meetup with Kelly Hogan and, and Kiltz and a few others. Nice. We got the Carnivore Cruise in February. I'm doing that. Um, I think there's a, lo a low carb cruise to Alaska. I, I don't know when that is. I think oh. that's, in, that's in April or something like that. And then meat stock. So there's a lot of shit going on. I'm sure there's even more than that. I'm going to the Keto Summit in Orlando with Dr. Kiltz uh, next week as well. So if you guys are looking to get out there, you want to just hang out with people, it's the best experience. Honestly, don't sit sit around thinking thinking about doing it. You don't have to come to Meat Stock. There's lots of other shit out there. Just just do it. Just get out oh, in the yeah. community, and it's it's a blast. It's great. It's, it's amazing. Well, Scott, this was awesome. Till the next time. Can't wait. Thanks a lot, man. All uh, right. Thank you, everybody listening to Primal Foundations podcast.